Hello, um, so I'm a big fan of Trello and I've just recently discovered a new tool inside of Trello called Butler, which actually allows you to automate actions that you might do frequently or kind of build customized actions, which is really handy. So I use Trello for pretty much everything, um, keeping track of to-do lists and work items, as well as you can see meal planning. Um, this is my giant board full of recipes that I have been working on for a couple of years now, um, some of which are really thoughtfully curated and have, you know, great labels on them. Others are kind of old and need to be updated. But either way, lots of good things here, um, lots to update. So what I wanted to do was to actually make it easier to create the shopping list and do the meal planning on a week-to-week -week basis based on all these cool recipes that I have. So I'm going to switch over to another recipe board I have created just for this demo, um, just to kind of simplify it and show you what's going on behind the scenes here. So in this example, and just like my original board, I, the very first column is called shopping. And I use this one because I've got a Google Home and an Alexa, and I have if this, then that recipes. If you don't know what that is, you should definitely check it out. Um, it's where you can kind of create automated recipes for life and connect all of your internet of things. So go check that out. You can create recipes where you can make those devices talk to Trello. So I can basically say, you know, okay, Google, add cheese to my shopping list. And I will speak it into existence and it'll appear as a card here on this board. So I wanted the same thing to happen from my recipe cards. I wanted all the ingredients from recipe cards to show up in the same shopping column as cards. Uh, because I also use this and I kind of like organize it. I drag it into like the different categories um, by sections of the store to make it easier to go shopping. So I'm going to show you how it works first. And I'm going to show you how I created those automated butler tools behind the scenes. <clears throat> and forgive me, I'm getting over a cold. So that's my voice is a little foggy. So for this first example here, I'm going to show you this veggie recipe for cauliflower gnocchi, which is so hot right now. If you haven't found it at Trader Joe's yet, I should definitely seek that out. Tons of Pinterest recipes for you. Um, what I've done is pretty much on most of my cards on my Trello board, I've created two checklists, one called ingredients and one called directions. And the neat thing about Trello is if you are copying and pasting a recipe from the internet, um, you can just like paste in a series of paragraphs and it'll create these little checklist items for you. It's amazing. Um, so I like to do that because like as I'm cooking, I'm a terrible cook. As I'm cooking, I like to actually mark these things off as like what I've completed um, in case, you know, you have to wait 15 minutes for something to happen and you come back and you're like, what step was I on? That's me. So I make this as simple as possible and I do directions and ingredients. So for today's demo, we're focusing on the ingredients part. And again, I wanted to move all of these checklist items over into my shopping list. So I created these customized Butler uh, power-ups, I guess, and I created one called Shop for Ingredients. So on this particular recipe card, if I click this button, you can actually see it's running Butler down here at the bottom of the screen. And in my shopping list, it's actually created a card for each one of the things that was in that shopping list. So now it's up to me if I would like to drag them into different columns or rather different like headers um, if I want to shop for something. So I can move in you know, marinara sauce into canned goods and broccoli crowns into veggies. You get the idea. Um, but the neat thing is, is I didn't have to do all this work on my own. So let's do this one more time with a simplified recipe. And this kale pesto here, um, I've actually already checked off a few items because I know I have them in my cupboard. So probably that's a good first pass is, you know, kind of do a mental checklist, or maybe go peek in your cupboards and say like, oh, I have olive oil, I've got salt, garlic, good to go there. And my recipe is set up, sorry, my recipe, my butler recipe called Shop for Ingredients is set up to only copy the items that are not checked off. So I'm going to run this one more time and you can see that it's only copied the kale, the parmesan, and the lemon, which I actually need to shop for. Pretty neat. Um, let's do another, which is I'm going to create a new recipe, something that I found on Pinterest. I don't know what it is. We're making it up. So Pinterest hotness. Cool. And I want to just kind of simplify the addition of those two checklists that I just talked about, which is here's a little button I created called new recipe. So it's, it's going to make sure that it adds the checklist. It spells it correctly because that's important for that other recipe that I was running and it gets kind of gets me going. Okay, so here we have a cauliflower gnocchi recipe, which I probably would never make because I don't really like sweet and sour, but let's pretend it's my most favorite. And like any recipe on the internet, you have to scroll past 47 hours of a story that precedes the actual recipe. 
and into the comment section. You got to backtrack. Okay, here we go. So here's my ingredients list. I'm just going to copy the ingredients themselves back to my card and Trello. And I'm going to click add an item. And you can see it's only adding one item here, but this is a secret, which is amazing, which is why I'm showing you this. If I actually paste in all of the items here into one item and hit return, it will separate them into separate line items for me. And the same is true of, of course, the instructions, which this particular recipe site has done a good job of splitting them out into lots of separate direction items. That's my pet peeve is when everything is lumped together, like it's just like really three steps and there's 27 things in each step. So fabulous. This has created a very thorough recipe for me here. All right. So let's pretend I now want to make this particular recipe. Um, I'm doing my weekly planning and I want to make it on Monday night. So I'm going to click my power up called Cook Monday. And again, I'm going to show you what's happening behind the scenes of these buttons, but I wanted to show you what they do first. So when I click Cook Monday, it's actually going to add a due date of Monday. You can see this is the next Monday on the calendar. Uh, 6.30 is when I think I want this notification to appear on my calendar. So I'm going to do 6.30. I've assigned myself as a member of this card so I can get any notifications or updates on it. And it has moved the card over into things to cook this week. Now, that's not really something you have to do. It kind of depends on how you want to organize your Trello board. Um, but I liked, because you can see in the last um, Trello board, I have like 50 million things. And it was really hard to go back and like find them after the fact. So I wanted to have them somewhere uh, handy where when it came time to actually cook the recipe, I could just grab it out of this column. So that was just an ease of use thing for me. But the neat thing is, is that by adding the due date, um, it will actually add it to a calendar. Let's see if that's something you have to turn on. Uh, you might have to turn it on. Okay, well, I'm gonna cheat and go back here and show you. I've got it already turned on. This is a power up in Trello. And you can see when I switch to the calendar view, I have things already added to my you know week for next week of what we're gonna do on which day and which things we're going to make. And you can sync this with Google Calendar. Um, you could basically just grab this iCalendar feed and import that as a Google Calendar, then it shows up in your real life calendar. It's pretty amazing. So I highly recommend that, but this is just kind of an ease of use thing. So let's get to actually how we create these magic buttons. Um, there's a lot of different things you can do inside of Butler. Like the rules section, you can kind of just say like, if I do a particular thing, like when a label is added to a card, then add an empty checklist. I kind of went this route initially because I didn't understand the power of the buttons themselves. So there's probably a lot more to explore in this rules section. Uh, but for this demo, I went ahead and created fancy buttons for each thing that I wanted to do. So let's go ahead and break these down. I'm going to do them in reverse order, the order I showed them to you in. So shop for ingredients was the first one. So if I edit this, you can see there is a plethora of things that you can do inside of a custom button. Um, it took me a little while to figure this out. I actually reached out to the Trello support team. They were very helpful and they let me know there were a lot of customized things under the cascade section. So check that out. Um, but this allows you to basically change things that are checklist items in Trello into cards. So if you want to convert something. That's what we're doing here. That's kind of complicated. You find that under cascade. So what I did was I said, want to convert uh, the items in a checklist. And in this case, I actually only wanted to convert the incomplete items. Remember, I wanted to check the box on the things I already had in my kitchen. So just incomplete items in a checklist. And the checklist name was always ingredients. And I did not want to convert them to linked cards because of this kind of board being recipes and shopping list. Um, it's likely that I'm going to use this again and again and again. So linked cards is really only good for a one-time pass. The second time you run it, it starts converting. It creates cards with Trello links, and then it just kind of falls apart. So you just want basic cards with the name of the ingredient on it. And there's a little bit more you can do here with using patterns if you wanted to change the name of the item. Um, I didn't feel that was necessary, so I just went ahead with this one. And once you have the recipe that you think you want, you're going to go ahead and click the green plus sign and it adds it to the top. So you can see, I actually already, oh, I missed an item actually. Um, I forgot to click the little more options and I wanted to add it to the list shopping. Remember I wanted it in that very first list. So add it to the list shopping. Okay, so now I have the same recipe more or less three times. So I'm just gonna delete this one 
And you can see these two look identical, so I'm going to delete that one too. So converting the incomplete items from ingredients into cards and list shopping. Cool. I'm going to save that. <clears throat> and you can basically reuse this again and again if you like. You can enable it on this board or for all boards, or you can share it with your team. So lots of cool stuff you can do here. All right, behind the scenes on the new recipe, this one's pretty dang simple. Um, I just went ahead and found under checklists, you want to be careful to add an empty checklist. Uh, I accidentally did this the first time where I said add the ingredients checklist. And what that'll do is copy an ingredients checklist from some other card on your board. You can get all kinds of crazy stuff. So make sure to add an empty checklist called ingredients and then another one called directions to your card. And that's just speeding up the recipe creation process. And then the next two buttons, you can see I only did Monday and Tuesday for this demo. You could create them for uh, every day of the week or maybe just your weekdays if you tend to cook on the weekdays um, and eat out on the weekends. Um, there might be a better way to do this, I'll fully admit. I haven't fully explored all of the ways to uh, utilize Butler. So there might be a smarter way to do this. But I just created buttons for Monday and Tuesday and so on because in the due date section, there's this handy feature that says set the due date to the next Monday. So if you wanted to do the next Monday, the next Tuesday, the next Wednesday, I thought this was a really handy feature and it sure as heck was faster than trying to manually add a due date to each card um, and kind of looking through a calendar and then also manually setting the time, which was also a pain. So I just did the next Monday at 6.30. Again, this is your preference based on your dinner time. Once you kind of have like this mini recipe here, you click the plus sign and then you're going to have to click the plus sign again. I don't know why. Um, I assume it's just because sometimes there's more than one thing you can do um, in a little action. So either way, got this set up, hit the plus sign, it adds it to the top, <clears throat> excuse me, and you can, I'm going to delete this one because it's a duplicate, but I just basically said, oh, look at this, this is a mistake. I said move the due date. You don't want to move a due date. If you don't already have a due date, you want to add a due date. So let's put it back and let's delete the wrong one. Okay. And we're on the Tuesday card. Don't worry about that. You get the idea. <laughs> um, the next thing I did is move the card to the top of the list of things to cook this week. I found that under the move section. You can see it's right here at the top. And I just typed in the name of my pre-existing list. <clears throat> I also added this action of join the card, and that's under the members actions. So I just put myself on it again so I could get any updates in case my husband decided to add anything. So there you have it. That's like a pretty long-winded way of showing you how to create some very simple buttons in Butler. Um, this can really streamline your, your food uh, planning, your meal planning for the week. And ideally, the whole goal behind this, honestly, is to avoid food waste. Um, I love it when we can kind of do our meal planning very concisely and just shop for the things we need rather than wandering through the grocery store and picking up things that just look good and then trying to make a meal. And inevitably, you always end up with stuff left over, right? You didn't get to use those veggies before they went bad, and that's always sad. So this is a way to make sure that you're only buying the things that you need, and you've got a recipe ready to go, and you've got it on your calendar. Easy peasy.